You've seen parts printed on this machine in previous videos, but I wasn't allowed to show it to you before today. Now I can, so let's do that. This is the Chidi Q1 Pro 3D printer. Chidi contacted me a few months ago and asked if I wanted to test their newest 3D printer. Now I need another printer like I need another hole in my head, but it looked interesting, so here we are. They sent me the printer free of charge. I didn't promise them anything. Technically, I'm not even required to make this video. They aren't paying me anything, and they didn't get to see the video before I released it. That said, if you like what you see and you want to check it out, there's a link down in the video description, and if you use that link and make a purchase, I earn a commission and that helps support the channel. The Q1 Pro is the newest printer release from Chidi Tech. The initial quoted street price is $599, but right now there's an early bird offer of $469. I don't know how long that'll last. I asked and they didn't know, so if you're interested, you might want to move on that sooner rather than later. If you're familiar with Chidi's previous machines, like the X Plus 3 that I reviewed a year ago, there's a lot here that you'll recognize. It's a metal frame machine with hollow steel shafts for the gantry, and they specifically call out that the bottom of the frame is metal reinforced. If you remember my initial review of the X Plus 3, the plastic floor was a source of thermal stability issues, so it's good to see that they've improved that. They also have a dual sensor bed leveling system with a proximity sensor in the extruder head and nozzle probing sensors in the bed. I don't actually know why they want or need two different sets of sensors, but whatever they're doing with them, it works. The first layer has been essentially perfect on everything that I've printed. The printer is fully enclosed with an actively heated chamber. You can set the chamber temperature up to 60 degrees Celsius, and that can help prevent warping with difficult to print materials like ABS and nylon. The printer comes with a single extruder and a single nozzle that they claim can print all filaments, including abrasives. Most of their previous printers came with multiple nozzles or even multiple extruders that you were supposed to swap out when printing different types of filament. The printer is running Clipper, and it comes stock with a chamber camera, which is also an improvement over the previous generation. The one other technical upgrade I see relative to the previous machines is that it has both a filament runout sensor in the extruder and what they call a filament wrapping sensor at the back of the cabinet. I had the filament break between these two sensors during a print job, and it detected it and allowed me to reload and continue. They claim it'll detect a tangled spool and stop for that as well, so that's pretty neat. The printer also has a new nozzle cleaning system and a catch bucket for purging at the beginning of each print. The extruder head presses on a lever that pops the wiper out from the back wall, and it's this weird springy structure that doesn't really inspire confidence, but it works really well. The nozzle always comes out of that clean and ready to probe the bed and start the print. Chidi has their own branded slicer called Chidi Slicer that works with all of their recent machines. And just like every other manufacturer, it's a derivative of Prusa Slicer. I really don't have much to say about it. It, it works, it's fast, it, the built-in profiles for their printers work well. I personally don't like the blue color or where they put all the buttons, but that's a personal problem. And if I'd use this one first, I would probably feel the same way about the green one and the orange one. So you can just forget I said anything about that. I wasn't really planning on doing a review video, so I just got the machine and started using it. I got it out of the box, turned it on, I printed exactly one Benchy with the included scrap of what I think is PLA. That looked great, so I put the machine to work. So maybe don't consider this a proper review since I didn't do a bunch of artificial testing to show off the machine, or maybe do consider it a proper review of what it's like to get the machine out of the box and start using it for real parts. This is the Benchy that I printed right out of the box. This is of course pre-sliced and tuned for the machine. I think it took a little over 15 minutes, which is typical, and it looks great. Actually, it looks really great. The bow line around the outside that usually appears level with the deck is almost invisible, and the bottom layer is fantastic. This might be the cleanest bottom layer I've actually seen on a Benchy. The only other real test I did was a first layer consistency test. 
I loaded up a roll of glass fiber reinforced ABS and printed a single layer across the entire bed. And again, this looks good. The first layer was a real weakness on the X plus three when it was first released, especially with high temperature filaments that use the heated chamber. The printer would warp and the bed would move during the first layer, but this looks great. Looks like they've solved that problem. This is one of the prototype parts I printed for the limit switches on the surface grinder project. I showed this part in my video last week, but at the time I couldn't tell you about the printer. This part has had some switches in and out of it to test the fit and it's been on and off the grinder. So if you see some scuffs, that's what those are from. This is the Chidi Ultra ABS GF25, which is a co-extrusion ABS material with 25% glass fiber. This was printed in the vertical orientation with only this small edge on the bed using the heated chamber at 55 degrees Celsius, and there's zero warping. It stuck firmly to the bed sheet and it had to be flexed to remove it even after it cooled down. This is the proximity switch holder also from last week's video and it looks just as good. This one of course already has the heat set threaded inserts in it to clamp the sensors in place. I sized the holes based on the sensor data sheet and they came out exactly on size on the first attempt. So Chidi has the default profiles tuned pretty well. Here are some more of the smaller parts for the grinder project and they also look good. I can't complain about this at all. They look great. Here's a larger part I printed to hold coiled up cables on the side of my milling machine. This is also printed in the same ABS GF25 filament and even the large curved surface on the side looks fantastic. This was printed laying on its side so half of that curve is overhang and I can't tell the difference at all. This part has openings through it for zip ties to anchor the cables and they printed cleanly without any support. I also did one print in ASA. This is my own modified version of the bottom half of the enclosure for a touch DRO scale adapter. I added the type of mounting tabs I prefer and some support for one of the cables. This material is Polymaker ASA, but I just used the default profile for Chidi ASA with the heated chamber and it looks great. ASA moves around a bit when it cools and the bed adhesion wasn't quite as firm as with the Ultra ABS material, but it stayed in place without any warping that I can see. Looking at the other machines I've tested, I think the closest comparison is probably to the Bamboo Lab P1S. So how do they compare? The Q1 is about $100 cheaper than the P1S at the quoted $599 price point versus the P1S at $699. Of course, it's more than $200 cheaper right now with the Early Bird Special. For that price, you do get an actively heated chamber, a 350 degree extruder, a 120 degree bed, and a hardened nozzle right out of the box. The hardened nozzle and extruder gears are available for the P1S, but you'll pay about $35 extra for those parts. Now, the P1S does have a larger build volume in a smaller overall package, and let's not forget that you can add on an AMS and have multicolor or multi-material printing. That's not even an option on the Q1 Pro. Now, is the heated chamber really a big deal? Well, as with most things, it depends. With the heater, the Q1 can raise the chamber temperature to 60 degrees Celsius and hold it there consistently throughout the print. But in my experience, when printing high temperature materials, the chamber in the P1S gets up to about 48, so the difference may not be that great. Of course, no product is perfect, and I do have some quibbles with the Q1 Pro. The printer comes with a spool holder arm that allows you to mount a spool of filament out to the side of the printer, and it is comically bad. Do yourself a favor and throw it right in the garbage. It's easy enough to just put the spool on the back of the printer, and if the printer's close to a wall like mine is, you can lift the pin out of the bracket, put it through the spool, and slide the spool back in behind the printer. Now it also wasn't totally clear to me what calibrations needed to be run or not run on the new printer. I did read the manual, and I found out that I did not need to run the manual bed leveling where you turn the knobs on the bottom of the bed before the first print. 
It would be much better if the printer screen just walked you through this on the first power up instead of hoping that you happen to look at the manual and notice that. The printer does have a fan that runs 100% of the time. It's way quieter than the one in the X Plus 3, but it's still there, so if you're sensitive to background noise, keep that in mind. That's why the printer is switched off right now. If you use the controls on the touch screen to change the filament, it actually tells you to pull the PTFE tube off of the extruder and cut the filament, and then it pushes the rest out through the nozzle. The Bamboo Lab machines have a built-in filament cutter, so they don't require you to do this. Now, of course, you can also heat up the nozzle and back the filament out, but I guess you run the risk of stretching out a thread of melted filament that could cause problems in the extruder later. Now, the firmware seems pretty solid. I didn't have any of the issues that I've had on previous Cheaty machines. It pretty much just worked. I will note that if you start a job and then try to cancel it while the printer is still heating up and running the auto bed level sequence, it will sit there and complete the entire process before it lets you have control back. And if you send another job to the printer while it's in that state, you can get it into a goofy situation where the control panel and the firmware lose contact in the one case where that happened to me, it reset and came back up on its own, but I restarted the printer anyway, just to be sure. So should you buy this printer? I think a better question is, who is this printer for? I think anyone could pick this up and use it as their first 3D printer. The bed leveling, the purge system, and the pre-configured profiles in the slicer are good enough that you could have success right out of the box with no prior experience. And for more advanced users looking to print engineering materials, the hardened steel nozzle and the heated chamber would make it a good machine for that application as well. Now, if you need a little larger build area or if you wanna print with multiple colors or multiple materials like breakaway support, it might be worth it to you to pay a little more and move up to the Bamboo Lab P1S or even the X1 Carbon. On the other end, if you're just starting out and you don't wanna drop this much on your first printer, you might want to look at the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. It has a smaller build area, but for less money, you still get a solid machine that'll just work right out of the box, and you'll always have the ability to add an AMS for multi-material printing later. That turned into way more than I was planning. Sorry, not sorry. If you like what you see here, there is a link down in the video description, but if you don't want me to get paid, whatever you do, don't click on it. You wouldn't want that. Thank you for watching.